So um, on Friday last there, we looked at um, why Home Rule emer uh, movement emerged in Ireland uh, in uh, 1870s, okay, under Isaac Butt, and how effective this movement was under, under Isaac Butt. So just a wee bit about Isaac Butt, first of all. Uh, here, here he is here, fine looking man. Right, so Isaac Butt, who was a, he was a leading lawyer in the Amnesty Campaign for the release of Fenian prisoners after 1867. He'd been a Conservative MP, but he was becoming disillusioned. He was becoming disillusioned at the ability of the British Parliament to enact uh, legislation for Ireland. Um, he set up a Home Rule Association in 1870 and then the Home Rule League in 1873 to campaign for an Irish Parliament. But I've said here at the bottom, it's really important uh, to note that he wanted Ireland to remain in the UK. He was not a separatist or a republic, and he's no, by no means a radical either. Uh, he was very much uh, conservative in his outlook. Um, and uh, essentially, he believed that the only way for Britain and Ireland to be reconciled was that if Ireland had its own parliament where it could make its own laws, basically meaning that the English people didn't understand Ireland and didn't understand Ireland's problems. Therefore, Ireland should have its own parliament, but stay in the United Kingdom. Okay, in the 1874 election, uh, Butts Home Rule League done incredibly well. Uh, if you look at the map there, all the areas coloured in, in green um, are seats won by the Home Rule, uh, Butts Home Rule Party. <clears throat> the other side of that was that the Liberals did incredibly badly in, in, that, uh, in that election, dropping just to 10. Remember we had said when we talked about Gladstone, that the Liberals had 66 seats in Ireland. Well, this is the end of Liberal Ireland in 1874. Their vote just collapses. And um, the question sometimes people ask is, well, why? What happened that the Liberals went from having 66 seats to just 10? And then this Home Rule Party just came out of nowhere. Well, the truth is that the Home Rule Party just didn't really come out of nowhere. There was a fallout with the Catholic Church and the Liberals over the Universities Bill. It's not important that you understand why, but you'll know that Gladstone... Um, had a, instigated a universities bill in, in 1870s as part of the reforms for Ireland and it, it led to problems with the Catholic Church. Um, also in 1872 there was a secret ballot act introduced which meant that for the first time people could go and elect um, or cast their vote whatever way they want and it would remain secret. Uh, nobody could come along later and look at a register and see who you voted for. And this was important in Ireland and gave people freedom of conscience, if you like, to vote whatever way they wanted. And that helped them vote for more radical parties like the Home Rule Party. Uh, also, the Liberal Party, by this, by 1873, 1874, by the end of Gladstone's first ministry, it's deeply divided over lots of issues. And it's divided in England as well. And it's fallen apart. And it's pretty clear that the Conservatives are going to come to power. So people see voting for the Liberals as a wasted vote. So they're looking around for an alternative. And the only alternative is the, is the Home Rule Party. So those are the reasons why the Home Rule Party uh, emerges uh, in that period. Uh, to look at the overall context of the general election, the general election resulted in this man here, Benjamin Disraeli, becoming uh, Prime Minister uh, for the Conservatives. Okay. Um, now, if you look at the figures in the House of, House of Commons, you can see there that uh, the Conservatives have a quite a large majority um, with, you know, uh, 350 seats compared to the Liberals 242 so 100 plus majority over the Liberals if the Home Rule Party combines with the Liberals you've only got 302 so the Conservatives still have got a good majority and this really is in a very very uh, strong position uh, as leader which means that Irish reform is going to be less likely now um, now the one thing that we would say about uh, what's Home Rule Party is that they are not a very strong party, and he's not very good at getting anything out of this uh, position that he's in now, being leader of the third largest party in the House of Commons. Um, and there's reasons for that. Firstly, uh, Butts Home Rule Party is disunited. Um, the easiest way to think about it, it's split into three, uh, three uh, groups. You've got the Home Rulers, about a third of the party, our home rulers, in, uh, or buttites, as I called them on Friday. Um, about a third are Fenians, and about another third are crypto-liberals. That means uh, 
MPs who had been members of the Liberal Party, but when they realised that the Liberals weren't going to win uh, the general election, uh, they switched to the Home Rule Party. But when they got into Parliament, they voted just like the Liberals. Okay, So you've got Home Rulers, Fenians and Liberals. Now these Fenians are, are, uh, are the group which uh, make the biggest impact uh, within Parliament. Uh, two in particular whose names you should get to know, John O'Connor Power and Joseph Bigger. John O'Connor Power is a very, very interesting character because he had, he had actually been involved in the, in the Chester Arms Raid, um, which was just before the 1867 rebellion. So he'd been involved, actually involved in that, along with a man called Michael Davitt, who we will come back to later. And Joseph Bigger, uh, who was an MP for uh, Belf in Belfast, West Belfast, I think. Um, and he was a leading member of the, the IRB uh, as well. So these two guys were, were leading members of the IRB and they were within uh, Bot's Home Rule Party. So they are Republicans uh, and they hit upon the tactic of obstruction. I'll just put that word there, obstruction. By talking for hours in Parliament and so on. And this becomes very embarrassing for, for Bot. In fact, in uh, 1877, I think it is, Bot asks for these guys to butt out, if you like, and stop uh, obstructing Parliament with their long, long speeches. Uh, because he, uh, but being a very conservative sort of person, is very, very embarrassed by the way that these men are behaving. Um, but he has no control over them. He has no control, but has no control over his own party. Okay. So that's one reason why they're not very effective, because they're, they're disunited. Also, we've sort of talked there already about the personality of Isaac Butt. Uh, he's very conservative, and conservative with a small c there. I don't mean he's a member of the Conservative Party. He's conservative in his views, and he doesn't like upsetting the, the apple cart. He's very deferential to authority and polite, and uh, is that uh, the sort of person. Um, he's not in your face. Uh, he's not pushy. Okay. And because of that, he couldn't inspire others. He was very uh, uninspirational. Quite often he was missing from Parliament, pursuing his legal career. Uh, so as a leader, he's not a, he's not a great leader. And we talked there as well about the Conservatives are in power now, so it's very unlikely that you're going to have a listening ear in Parliament with the Conservatives in power because they're not that overly um, uh, sympathetic to Irish um, concerns. Okay, So it's not really until the arrival of this man, Charles Stuart Parnell, uh, that we see the Home Rule Party take on a more effective uh, role within the Parliament. And uh, we will come to look at him next, okay? But uh, uh, he doesn't really uh, take charge of the movement until 1879. So for these first five years, uh, we've got Isaac Butt's uh, uh, organization, or Isaac Butt in charge of this organization, and uh, it's not really effective. So if you missed on Friday, that's what you missed. Uh, we read the section in the book about this. Um, and uh, we mind mapped and we just took down what we needed to know about Isaac Butt and his Home Rule Party. Um, and maybe if you were missing, you could do something similar, but it's sort of already done for you here. All right.